gives me great pleasure to welcome Duane, who is going to share with us something that may be helpful if needed and followed, and can give us the assurance that is promised. So this time is all yours, Duane, so feel free to go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Hopefully it's coming through okay, and you can see me okay. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. That song interestingly enough, became my theme song in 1980. I was in uh, North Bay, Ontario, and in the middle of the winter, as you know, we get a lot of snow up there, and uh, the gloom and the doom of no sun and lots of snow, I picked that song out and uh, memorized that as I marched through the snow drifts. As the snow was falling down, I just wanted to get my mind in a better place. And that then ties in with where we left off last week. I was reading that uh, quotation from Steps to Christ in page 71, where it says, when the mind dwells on self, it's turned away from Christ, the source, source of strength and life. So it's Satan's constant effort to keep the attention diverted from the Savior and thus pre prevent the union and communion of the soul with, with Christ. And then it goes on and lists a number of things that uh, really zaps our energy. Because you notice when it started out there, it said Christ is the source of strength and life. And of course, his life is the abundant life. And strength would be to have a powerful, spiritual, Christian life. One that... Um, is ready to take on all the difficulties and trials that we go through to get charged uh, up. So when uh, difficult times come, we're able to uh, go through them a little better than we would have otherwise. So it goes on to say that the things that are holding us back, the pleasures of the uh, world, life's cares, perplexities, and sorrows, the faults of others, or our own faults and imperfection. At the any or all of these, he'll seek to divert the mind. Do not be misled by his devices. So many who are really conscientious, who desire to live for God, he too often leads to dwell upon their own faults and weaknesses. So you've probably uh, noticed yourself when uh, you goof up or don't uh, do things the way you think you should, you tend to beat yourself up. Well, it's saying right there that that is defeating 
your spiritual growth by doing that. And it says uh, that actually separates you from Christ. And that's just what Satan wants. He hopes to gain the victory. And so we shouldn't make self the center and indulge anxiety and fear even as to whether we should be saved. All this turns away from uh, our soul, from the source of our strength. So commit the keeping of your soul to God and trust in him. Now, I want you to notice something in here. It says trust in him because uh, we all, when we accept Jesus into our life, we think of in terms he's coming into our life and he does. But here's something that started really dawning on me uh, a few years back that uh, we can trust in him. So notice that as we go through these quotations and, and texts and so forth about being in Christ, what it means to be in Christ. Talk and think of Jesus. Let self be lost in him. So we can have Jesus in our life, but still be concentrating on ourselves as well as Christ. But here it says, let self be lost in him. Now, wouldn't that be nice if self was lost? We're going to be lost in him. Okay, put away all doubt. Dismiss your fears. And as we went over last week, we are being given permission by God to put away all doubt and dismiss your fears. If that wasn't ever a uh, sense of freedom, I don't know what is. I don't have to doubt anymore. I don't have to worry. I don't have to fear. Say with the Apostle Paul, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So then it goes on to say, that was from Galatians 2.20, rest in God. Okay, now this is interesting. We just said, if self is going to be lost in him, now we're going to rest in him. And certainly if self was lost, that would be restful in itself. He is able to keep that which you've committed to him. So who's able to keep what you've committed to him? He is able. Notice that. He is able. doesn't say we keep ourselves. He keeps us. Our uh, work is to put ourselves in him. Now, if you will leave yourself in his hands. You notice that again? Okay, trust in him. Let self be lost in him. Rest in God. If you will leave yourself in his hands. He will bring you off more than a conqueror through him that has loved you. Isn't that fantastic? So the purpose of this is to understand how to go from victory to victory. So often in our spiritual life, we're cruising along. Everything seems just fine and crash. We just uh, fall into the depths of worry, fear, anxiety, despair, whatever. One thing is, of course, we forget that we have permission, that we don't have to think about these things. The other thing is that uh, we're just not concentrating on Christ. And if we will, then we'll win, we'll conquer, and we'll overcome. Well, as I begin to get keys to the spiritual life, keys unlock the treasures, the resources of heaven, right? Prayer is the key. So what I decided to do to keep myself from constantly in this yo-yo religion of up and down emotional uh, landscape of, of my life, I made a little book. I just started collecting all these things uh, in my phone and computer and so forth in Microsoft Word made it into a little book. If you can see this here, this little book, I've had different names for it, but this, this one here, it's, it's called Brain Train, Overcoming Depression Caused by Wrong Thinking, God's Plan of Success. And I started putting this together in 2015. And each time I came up to a roadblock in my life, I would pray and uh, God would give me light. He would give me a verse of scripture, a quotation from the spirit of prophecy, whatever it happened to be. And uh, I would have some light 
that I could record in my book. So I started recording these things so that when I forgot uh, what helped me in the past, I could go back and look that up again. Where did I find the light last time? Let me just double check. Of course, I had it in my book. So it was very easy to find. So the idea was, as we just read that quotation, instead of focusing on our circumstances, our feelings, the weather, whether it's good or bad or whatever it is, uh, we will depend solely on God. So we'll be not dependent um, on people, we'll be interdependent on people, but we'll be dependent on God. We'll look to Jesus. And of course, in, in John uh, 6, 63, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So looking at his word, we have spirit and we have life. And what we do with that is to talk faith, sing faith, pray faith, think faith, so that you have faith. And that's the faith that overcomes the world. That's in uh, Christ Object Lessons, page 146. So learn how to do that. Talk faith, sing faith, pray faith, think faith, and you have faith. And that's what overcomes the world. And it's based on his word. So talk and act as if your faith was invincible. So you take on a new type of vocabulary where you realize that everything is possible in Christ. He has the answer to everything. So in this book of keys, when I was recording everything that uh, worked for me in the past, everything that worked, put it down. What's the key? Here's a few of them that I found out. Okay, the one thing was prayer is the key in the hand of faith to unlock heaven's storehouse where are treasured the boundless resources of omnipotence, correct? Steps to Christ, page 94. Did you know that Colonel Sanders, when he retired, you know, he was the one that started Kentucky Fried Chicken. Do you have that in Canada? I think you do. When he started that, he had just retired and he looked at his social security check and he said, I can't live on that. And so he looked at what his resources were. All he had was a chicken recipe. His mother baked this fantastic chicken. And so he, he made his mind up to uh, see what he could do with that. He tried to sell it, tried to uh, peddle his chicken recipe. Nothing worked. He finally said, well, I've got to start a franchise myself. And you can see what happened. Now, he did this when he was retired, after he had finished all his working life, and he made an extreme success out of it. So that just gives you an example of what a person in the world can do when they put their mind to it, imagine what we can do with God's word. Now, remember when Jesus was praying at the tomb of Lazarus in John 11, you can read it in there, 41, 42, and so forth. He said, addressing his father in heaven, I thank you that you've heard me. Now, you see the difference between Lord, um, help us, you know, and he can help us in terms of connecting to him. But remember, without him, we can do nothing. So we don't just need a little bit of help. We need a gift, completely 100%, uh, a gift of his strength, a gift of oneness with him, okay? So he can help us remember to connect, to do that. But our work is to fight the fight of faith, correct? Okay, so he started out, I thank you. So when we talk to God, we don't say, well, I, I hope that, uh, you know, you can give me some help with this. You can get me out of this. You just say, thank you, Lord, for giving me the victory. Because my focus is entirely on you. I know that you'll come through. So talk like that. Talk 100% positive. Absolutely 100%. When Jesus was there at Lazarus' tomb, Lazarus was 100% dead, right? Okay. Jesus had the key to life. And what was it? It was his word. Key to life. Just said, Lazarus, come forth. And he did. So that's uh, a key to call upon God in the day of trouble and he will deliver you. And you start out by saying, I thank you, Lord, that you heard me. 
because he always hears a sincere prayer. and you're, you're praying sincerely. And that's just what Jesus said. That's our example. So we can definitely 100% do that. That's, that's a key. And he will guide us to where our problems are, even if we don't realize what they are. I've run across, I do counseling, and there, there's people that are getting emotionally involved with other people. They're married couples, but one of the spouses is getting uh, emotionally involved with uh, somebody else, flirtatious and so forth. And they don't even realize that they're, they're on um, troubled uh, areas where they could get into a big problem. And of course, their spouse certainly doesn't like it, but they don't realize it. We have to bring it to their attention and the Holy Spirit will convict them if um, they are Christian oriented type of person. Okay, so with the uh, Holy Spirit working in our lives, the three basic things that help me to have a key like this, there's three C's in the spiritual life as well as we used to have a uh, health uh, seminar, a cooking school called Three C's. If you remember that way back, it was uh, cancer, uh, cardiac arrest and something else. So in the spiritual life, choose, okay, you choose Christ, choose Christ to dwell in you, choose to be in Christ, consent to have every thought brought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and cooperate with him, okay? Because so often we wonder, well, you know, what's our part in this? And it's very, very important to know our part because if we're trying to do God's part, we're gonna have failure, correct? And if we're not doing our part, God can't bless. So we've got to distinguish between what's his part and what's our part. Now it is true without him, we can do nothing and all our righteousness is as filthy rags. So we know that we can do these things. We can choose to have him in our life. We can choose to put ourselves in him, consent to have every thought brought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And when he moves on our heart through the Holy Spirit and says, don't think in that direction. Get on the right track. We cooperate with him and, and uh, begin to focus on him and his word. So then the Holy Spirit is given without measure. That's uh, pointed out in the spirit of prophecy that if we will consent to have every thought brought into the captivity of the obedience of Christ, the Holy Spirit is given without measure. And that, that's fantastic. You're nurtured, you're loved, you're cared for, you're understood, you're accepted, you feel you belong, you feel you're valuable, you feel your life is worthwhile. Just so, so many benefits. We'll get to the place by doing this that we'll be settled into the truth so we won't be moved. Now, who's the truth? Christ, correct? Christ is the truth. So remember the text. If anybody is in Christ, do you see that again? In Christ, what are they? They're new. And what are they? A new creation. Okay. Do you believe in evolution or creation? Now, this is a concept I want you to think about. Creator, a creator creates something. Jesus creates something by speaking. You remember that in Psalms 33, six and nine, he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. So in your life, you then by focusing on him, he speaks peace to you. Now that's interesting. So believe that you have peace, whether you feel it or not right at the moment. Say, thank you, Lord for giving me peace because I ask it in Jesus' name and through his merits, not ours, through his. Believe that you have it because he said he would give it to us. And if you're in Christ, you're a new creation. So say, thank you, Lord, I am new. This is absolutely fantastic. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Have you heard that? Jeremiah. 23, 6, Proverbs 18, 10. What is the name of the Lord? Christ, our righteousness, correct? Okay, and that's in Isaiah as well. 
Christ, our righteousness, the Lord, our righteousness. So where do we get our righteousness from? It's from him. Okay. And the Christian then, what is he doing? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Do you see the in again? In? So you're going in to Christ's name. Colossians 2.10. Remember that absolutely 100% fantastic scripture? You are complete in him, okay? You see the difference there, okay? If we're in Christ, it's new. This is a new way of looking at things. You are complete in him. Because why? Because it's his righteousness. It's his forgiveness. It's his supplying everything we need. Does he supply everything we need? Of course he does. So we're complete in him. So get off to a good start in your battle. You're going to be fighting the fight of faith every day. And I'm trusting you've done it for years and years and years. But let's fight the fight of victory instead of fighting the fight of defeat, failure, gloom, and doom. Instead of moaning and groaning, and I remember reading in the Spirit of Prophecy where Ellen White said, if your Christian life is like it's all uphill, you've got the wrong thing. We need to get on top of things instantaneously. The creator spoke and it was done. He will put you on top of things instantaneously. Yes, you have, may have some feelings connected that will fade away as time goes on, but get your faith instantly in Christ. What this is, is permanent revival, okay? You're gonna learn how to be permanently revived by being in Christ. I'm trusting you always have Christ in you because you wouldn't be a Christian if you didn't. So you're a Christian, he's in there, you're justified by faith, but let's understand what it means to have the imputed righteousness of Christ to us, permanent revival by being in Christ. Ye are complete in him, correct? All righty, where there's no vision, the people perish. Isn't this a fantastic vision? Absolutely. How do you know you're working in the right direction to get the results you want? Going from victory to victory. You know that by his word, correct? Ye are complete in him. Okay, this may be, I'm thinking that uh, a lot of us have not understood what it means to be in Christ. If we're still blaming other people for our problems, if we're still moaning and groaning about things, if we're not heading out in the right direction, first thing in the morning, it doesn't matter what the weather is. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are. It doesn't matter what people say to you or don't say to you. It doesn't matter how you feel, it matters where you put your faith. You put it, you put your life in Christ. All right, happiness then is really just a word away, isn't it? Just a word away, the word of God. Because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And of course, his uh, word, it, it, words are spirit and life. So again, the difference between a creator versus evolution. So if you've been on the evolution track, you know, the Lord over a number of millions of years will manage to uh, get me on the right track, right? Well, of course, we don't have a million years to begin with, but that's what evolutionists usually speak of, right? A million years for this. If they can't explain something, just add on another couple million. But see, Christ is instantaneous. So when you claim by faith, now there's many things you can claim by faith, okay? You claim one thing by faith, then you get instantaneously one thing. You claim two things, three things, five things. You see what I mean? So I made a whole book of things I could claim so that I just got happier and happier and happier in Christ. Now, this is not something where you just go around with rose-colored glasses on because every day when you wake up, you're plagued 
automatically, instantly with the gloom and doom of life, aren't you? You're just automatically plagued with it. Well, good for you if you wake up some morning and that never happens to you. But I have become so convinced by studying God's word that when we put ourselves in him, as well as him and us, that it completes the uh, relationship with him. Ye are complete in him. Get in him. That's number one. Okay, that's your foundation key. When you get up in the morning and you stay in him by not focusing on the gloom and the doom around you, okay? And God makes this happen. So I will take action, which is personal power, and that's spiritual power, because that's what we want. We want spiritual power. We don't want some manipulating power that we can have power over other people. No, we want to serve other people, correct? I'm always amazed when somebody comes along with some new theology that uh, they think is better than anything anybody else of us have got uh, that's in the Bible that somehow um, we missed it. And uh, the more spiritual you are, the more you're going to be serving and loving and caring, correct? So I always uh, think, okay, if you've got some advanced spiritual light, then you're willing to serve more. So, you know, come help us clean toilets, scrub the floors in the church. Let's do a whole bunch of maintenance stuff because you've got some great theology there and it makes you a greater servant. So we're going to fight the fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. Who, who's eternal life? Christ is eternal life. So we're going to hold on to him. We're going to be in him. We're going to be in eternal life. So it's all surrounded you completely in eternal life. You know how you get in water and it buoys you up and makes it just easier to uh, uh, float and uh, to stay above uh, the weight that uh, you would carry if you were... Uh, walking with regular gravity it just seems like you're on the moon when you're in the water and and when you come out because we do a lot of swimming in the summer down here we have uh swimming pools in these 55 and over parks that uh, they're heated year round you can swim in them anytime day or night but when you come out of a pool you walking up the steps all of a sudden you get so heavy and heavy and heavy but just in the water so that's just a little simple example of being in Christ. So just reviewing some of those top keys in Christ it means that uh, you're in the creator and he's, he creates things instantaneously. He gives you a complete boost right there. Ye are complete in him. What a relief. I'm complete in him. When Jesus says I'm complete in him, I'm not lacking in anything, correct? He's got everything because his word creates. And so we're taking heart action. We're fighting the fight of faith. We're talking faith, thinking faith, praying faith, singing faith. And then we have faith that conquers. According to your faith, be it unto you. So the more you work on strengthening your faith, the easier it becomes to stay that way. Now it takes work uh, to fight the fight of faith. This is where you put your, your work your exercise that God has already given us a measure of faith. But then as we read these texts and we repeat them over and over and over and over again, they just become a part of us. We re uh, train our mind to not focus on the gloom and the doom, but to focus on success, spiritual success. And that begins in the mind, the heart, the limbic system. They've been studying a lot about the limbic system, how, if, if we've been uh, had a bad habit for years, whether it's smoking, drinking, whether it's people looking at pornography nowadays, one of the last deceptions before Christ comes is, uh, is that you can get uh, something better by looking at pornography than uh, having it God's way. And that, that's destroying families, that's destroying relationships, that's destroying people. It's absolutely unbelievable what's happening. 
But that is one of the last signs. If you remember before the children of Israel went into the promised land, the Midianite women, they try, uh, Satan tried to destroy the Israelites with, with living pornography, correct? Okay, so we know we're at the end of time. We know that we need to be settled in the truth. And this is the a step that'll just jump us straight in to a fantastic experience with Christ that is a permanent revival that we can keep from this yo-yo religion. We want to cut down those, those uh, valleys and try and level them off as much as possible. Now, that's not going to happen overnight. But remember, as you practice and practice, you talk faith, think faith, pray faith, sing faith, you have faith. Now remember, if you want to stay in your pain, continue to blame. If you make other people responsible for your behavior, I can't do this because my wife is nagging me all the time. I can't do this because I've got to work all the time and my mind is on something else. Well, see, here's the thing. Whenever it comes to your mind, put yourself right there in Christ. Remind yourself, I am in Christ. I'm in Christ right now. And so I am complete. Psalms 37, 4 and 5. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Delight thyself, what? Also in the Lord. Get in the Lord, because you're complete in him. And he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Isn't that fantastic? He puts desire in your heart, and then he meets it. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also, what? In him. And he shall bring it to pass. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. You're in him. You're in his righteousness. You're in his perfection. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Isn't that fantastic? Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life because eternal life is absolutely 100% fantastic. Therefore, if any man, any human, any being be in Christ, he's new, a new creature. Old things are passed away. So we're putting behind us all the gloom and all the doom and all the pessimism. Now, is this going to happen perfectly every day? No. But as we practice it, it's going to get better and better and better and better. We're going to fight the fight of faith, not the fight of good works, not the fight of trying to be good. That does not work. You cannot find satisfaction and happiness in trying to be good. You just can't do it. But you can get in Christ, and he is able to keep that which we've committed to him. Now, how are we going to be able to do this? We're going to do this by God's word. Romans 10, 8, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. So we have his word. We memorize his scripture. We have it right with us every moment of every day. Now listen to this, 2 Corinthians 13, 8. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Look at the power this brings to you in your life. Who is the truth? Christ. Do you have Christ? Okay, if you have Christ and you're in Christ and he's in you, then nothing can be done against you but for you. Do you understand that? That takes a lifetime to understand that, doesn't it? Many, many times I thought that something was against me, only to find out in time that it was for me. And it was because I was seeking God. Now, if you're not seeking God, you're going to get bitter, you're going to get resentful, you're going to get angry, you're going to get hostile, you're going to have a desire to punish. But if you're in Christ, he will show you that what you went through that seemed so horrible was just what you needed, correct? He won't let anything come to you except it's for your good. So remember, all your problems now become possibilities. They become opportunities to learn how to grow in Christ. And there's no failure in Christ if you learn from it. Christ is trying to teach you something. He will allow you to fall flat on your face. But what he's trying to do is get you to so focus on him and so keep your mind and heart fixed on him, in him and his righteousness and his goodness that you can survive these things 
and he won't have to cause you to fall to bring you closer to him. Now, if there's a weakness that you have, then yes, he's going to allow you to uh, recognize what the weakness is, and it may include uh, falling, but it doesn't have to be a failure to learn and overcome it. Okay, John, we're just wrapping this up. John 1, 5 to 7. This then is the message. Did you hear a message tonight? This then is the message that we've heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him, there it is again, in him, there is no darkness at all, okay? So how are you dragging around darkness? How are you in gloom and doom if you're in Christ? There is no such thing as gloom and doom in Christ. You see the difference here? Declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Can you imagine what light would be like if there was no darkness? It blinds you. There's no darkness in Christ and you're in him now. There's no darkness in your life now. Why? Because you're in Christ. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Christ is the truth. So if you say, yeah, I'm a Christian, but things are going miserable. Oh, moan, groan. I hate this. Why is this? Oh, the church this and that. And why are these people like this? And I wish we had this and that. That's, that's not being in Christ. That's a lie. We say we have fellowship with him, but we walk in darkness. It's because we're not in Christ. But if we walk in the light, did you get that again? In the light. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, you see the difference there? Christ never thinks of gloom and doom. Christ never thinks of uh, sinful things. He's in the light. As he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Are you worried about whether you're cleansed from all sin? Get in the light. Does that make sense? Get in the light. Have you ever thought of this? God is absolute. Do you know what that means? That means he is determined in himself and not by anyone outside of himself. We don't determine who God is. He's absolute. And what does he say about himself? He says, I am. Not I hope to be, not I wish, not I want to be. You hear people say, I want to be a Christian? No, he is. I am. And when you're in the I am, you are. So when I'm in Christ, I am victorious in Christ. Now keep this in mind. Never, ever say justification by faith, period. It's only justification by faith in Christ. It's only righteousness by faith in Christ. I'm a conqueror in Christ. Get in Christ and you conquer. Get in Christ and you're victorious. Get in Christ and you're an overcomer. Get in Christ and you have value. You've sent your value. Get in Christ and you sense the meaning in life. Get in Christ and you will get up every morning in Christ, praising his holy name, looking on the bright side and not letting anything bring you down because you're in Christ. I know in whom I believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that what? which I've committed unto him against that day. Isn't that fantastic? Fight the fight of faith, permanent revival, get in Christ in this new way, and you will have a permanent revival. God bless. That's finished.